All right, so follow this rail right here. You see that gap right there? If you go all the way down this rail, that gap is barely perceptible. In fact, I can move the rail here into where it touches and it doesn't move at the other end, right? And it does that if I do it square. Now, dropping it square doesn't do it because it'll slide underneath of it. But, oy, oy, oy. hold on, let's jiggle it. If I shimmy it like this, barely a perceptible gap, and it just humps over right there around the wheel well, and then flush with the end. And then you go to the inside, the inside is touching right there, and stretches out to about a half inch right here in the middle in this wheel well. And then it's touching right at the very end. So what does that tell us? The uh, bottom rail is bent, but the top rail isn't. But I'll show you why with the other rail, because both of the rails look the same. If you look down the length of this one, my post is touching right here. And as you follow it, can you see that? About a one inch gap all the way down the length of it. See, it's touching right there. And that isn't even the end. It goes all the way down there to the end. All right, so if you come back and look at it, and then you look at it here, you can see perceptible bend bow in both of them. And it's right there around the wheel well. So I was thinking that I would do this the hard way or the, uh, the really hard way. And uh, it looks like I have no option but but to do the really hard way. And that would be to cut off the fenders. Now, unfortunately for me, the guy who put the fenders on did me no favors. When he put this on, he welded way up in here where I can't reach it. And he welded this one so well. <clears throat> Hold on, there you go. He welded this to where I can't even see where the edge is. And he welded that there too. Heck on it. He welded that right there. And this, so I can't tell where the edge of the fender is. I gotta cut all that free. And I think that's a job for the four inch grinder on one of these fenders. I think I can actually get up in there with the uh, die grinder and the two inch discs and cut it off. But I think I gotta take his fenders off in order to fix this. Cause um, yeah, they're just, they're hampering what I'm doing right now. Maybe it was this fender when I went up inside of it. They had welded way up in here. They welded way up in there on one of them. And I was like, why did you do that to me? But you can't see where I'm talking about. I got to cut that. And then this around here. And you see, he actually melted the fender away there and there. That one's just a giant glob of stuff. Now, I only have so much time today. So I'm going to start working on cutting the fenders away. Because what else can I do? And uh, I'm going to cut the fenders off real quick. And I never measured where the fenders were in relation to the front of the trailer or the back of the trailer. But if I try to bend this straight, the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, these posts right here will not allow the, the bottom rail to flex away without them trying to bend this way a little bit. So it, it's a little coordinated effort to try to get these bends out. And uh, we're going to see if we can do it. But i got to take the fenders off. So, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's going to be my morning today. Um, <clears throat> I've just come to the determination that I don't like it. It ain't straight. It ain't fixed. And I know people say you can clamp things and pull them in and stuff like that, but that doesn't take the bow out of it that's in it because of the fenders. And uh, then I'll fix it, and we'll go from there. All right, first thing i got to do, <clears throat> before I do all that, is center the f measure the fenders and make sure I know where the centers are, right? Call that 47 and a half. This is the uh, driver's side, and that's the passenger side, but I had it upside down. So, all right, so fenders. Let me draw the trailer here again. Fenders. I'm going to call that 47 and 3 eighths. And I'm going to call. This one here to the back edge is 71 and 3 eighths.
pacifist. Uh, before you know, you just go randomly um, cutting things. Sometimes it, it doesn't hurt to measure them because, I mean, she was in the ballpark. All right. I'm going to call that again 47 and 3 8. Every turn. Those are the only measurements I've had matched on this thing. Next side would be Bobby Dern, 71 and 3 8. The only measurements on this entire thing that have matched is the location of the finger. Well, at least we got that going for us, right? Only the fender guy actually gave a crap. <laughs> okay, so that's measuring my fenders real quick. All right, let's see what I can do here. Um, I managed to get one fender off. I managed to get that fender over there cut off. Now I got to do this one. All right, so that's the driver's side and this is the passenger side. But because I had the trailer flipped completely over, the passenger side is on the driver's side and the driver's side is on the passenger side. But I figured I would show y'all um, what I needed to do here in order to get these fenders to come off because they weren't exactly fun. And I thought maybe somebody else is not having fun <coughs> and they can have not learn how to avoid some of the trouble of the not fun for me. Uh, at least shorten their times. You know what I mean? All right, so what do we got here? First thing I needed is to change this grinder zone out, which if you don't have multiple grinders is a necessity. Flip. And this handle, lo and behold, is handy. <laughs> handy handle, right? Anyway, um, take that off. Put that on. One. I don't know where y'all are reaching. Come to find out that one of my favorite things to film is the cord on the equipment and completely blocking the entire shot with the cord. That's why I stuck y'all over here because the cord plugs in right here today. All right. So I just got home, I just got this stuff set up. I had some other work I had to do. And, uh, all right, so I got big globby pack welds on here. And if I'm lucky, I can just grind right to the edge of them and be done with all, all of this, right? But if I'm not so lucky, I gotta go in. flat and the ground is what I believe is the edge of the actual uh, fender. I got that one close, right? Now my problem when coming in here and trying to cut it with this is then that the, I have to tilt it because there's a wheel, a screw on the bottom of this harbor, and uh, that makes it very difficult. So I keep hitting the fender with it. You see this angle right here I can't get it off I have to come in from underneath yeah so anyway all right I got those two buzzed out right let's come back over here
Look at that. Got lucky. Alright, now I can't reach the rest of that. But what I can do, you see how I said I got lucky just now? I managed to get underneath of it with the one cut, or the one grinding. In fact, this one ground clear. And the only spot is sticking still is right here. You can see this how that's kind of down on the uh, down on the fender. Some people are just dangerous to tools. I don't know if I'm one of them. All right. I'm going to grab a camera. I'll show you all what's got going on here. Now, there's a good possibility that when uh, you watch his videos, you can just speed everything up to two times speed. But, all right, first off, let me show you the grind. Can you see that? Can you see how I, gr I, I ground it just enough to get up under the weld? Now this side, I wasn't so lucky. And there's still, still a, grind, a weld right here. Oh, that's warm. Still a weld right there, all right? All the way across. And I'm going to have to cut that from the outside. On this side, I'm going to stand her up. And uh, you see, I got lucky. All this weld was actually on the frame. And when I ground it to the edge of, the, to the edge of this, it was just a little bit where he'd melted the fender. And then no actual weld to it the bottom didn't get so lucky and of course again I got one on the outside right here and you can't see that because the Sun decided to shine right here. Well, when I set up it wasn't shining here and uh, yeah five minutes later it's broad daylight right here so um, I gotta set that up so we can cut that a little bit and he didn't they didn't weld it along the inside anywhere here but the top is a lot more difficult and it's easier if you get the bottom cut off first if you cut the bottom tabs free, then the top section will roll a little out of the way from the bottom. So I'm going to set y'all back on the camera stand so I can fiddly part and move things around. Now, remember where we focused at, right? Right here? All right. Y'all forgive me um, for what I got going on if I seem a little spacey. I, I'm very stressed out. Uh, it's not you. Just doing something to get away from my stress. And that's all this is. Got to change my grinding stone out. I tried grinding in this corner. It's too tight for the grinding stone. So. the first time was the first time I came through here I think I had to flip the guard around
you can set your truck and then so you don't have to get up and sit down and next thing you know you're, you're moving it all. Constantly, constantly. Uh, all right, you can't really see what I'm doing here. In fact, the handle is really in my way. I'm going to set that down here in the tray. A whole lot of come and check it out, come test it, and see if you got it. Now I'm going to bend this a little bit, <coughs> but what's happening? This is perfect on the inside right here, and if I bend it just right, I can reach up here from this side. You see. this one all the way. So I think I got this one as deep as this thing is cut. There you go. I just broke through it. you need a bigger wedge. Alright? Now I got a lot of meat in here. It's gonna be down. I'm gonna come around on it with the grinder. Can't get it from this direction. I can almost reach the whole distance of this. And now if I take the little grinder and come in here, I'm just going to try the spark that way. I 
and that's that fender, apparently. All right, so the top upper fender is a little bit harder. And uh, if you notice with the last one, how it beat on it. Yeah, it's very really easy to make them beat on it or do anything. This is solid steel. All right. So I did the first thing I told you. Second thing I got to do, I found was come in here with this, and cut as much as of a, I can of it from here. And it'll start loosening, and I can open the gap on the inside a little bit bigger. And part of that it out of the way. Uh, grinder has like a thermal cutout on it. And uh, once it decides to get hot, it, it starts cutting off real easy. Like binding. the first time was come in here with this and I just barely got in there Cut. 
I'll bend this out the way too. Just a little bit. Not have to be much. Just enough to get in there and work without cutting things. Now, it's easier to fix the bends than it is to uh, repair where I cut it. I've been taking this has been 24 minutes okay I'll be back in a bit I'm just gonna let the uh, film roll in case anyone's ever wondering what happened to me there's video evidence this thing gets so frustrating sometimes and I know, I know, you ain't supposed to take this off. But the way I see it, I'm actually inside of a shield already. So, hold on. Let's keep it going around this way. Oh, oh, oh. It won't come off without taking the wheel off. everywhere for your tools. with these things. I, I really don't like doing this. Alright. Now, I'm enclosed entirely inside of steel here. Except for my fingers. Anyway, you know, he 
people are uh, people are very weird. All right, so I recognize my bad habit. And I don't support it, and I don't recommend it to anyone. Nor would I ever advertise for it to anyone. They, uh, they allow other things to go on unheeded. All the drug use and stuff, how-tos. But that bad habit, they're like, no, you must get rid of it. And that's always been a curious thing to me. it a little you can tell when it wants to come off about this thing, this little backgrounder for years. And how much I'd like to have one. And now that I got it, I'm rather disappointed in it. It just chokes out so easy, no power. Power. All right, let's try the other wheel. Just keep your face out of line with it. proof. Look here, I didn't cut into the steel on any of those. Alright. Now, actually I cut into the steel a little bit here on this one. Let me see if I get you close enough you can see it actually. Alright. Alright, that's rust. And uh, well, the focus. Alright. Just a little bit right here, just a little bit. And then that is a little bit of grind into it, but the grind itself is flat and flush. Now that grind is a little bit into it. But this right here, if I hold her up, let you look. See, I'm actually proud of the surface with all of it. Same with this one over here. Now this one I did get down into the frame a little bit. I got a little line where I was trying to cut from the bottom. Got a line right there. But up here, eh, maybe a little. Right there. Right there. Now, and here's where he welded it originally. And this crater crack. Can you see the crater crack in it? The camera won't really focus. There's a line in there. Oh, yeah, you can see the line. All right, let me take my screwdriver and point at the line. See the line right here? Yeah, that is where his welding, um, no, that, that's his weld line. The edge of his puddle. <clears throat> All right, so we got these off. 
now to grind them flat and I think I'm gonna come back and tack them up and uh, weld those flat because I might bend it some more welding on it and if I want to do that then it does me no good to go ahead and straighten the frame so let's weld all these back to fix and um, then we'll come back and we'll uh, start trying to straighten everything out and put this frame back together because personally I, I'm, I'm sick of this trailer <laughs> I'm having fun with it but it's been like three weeks of my free time now and uh yeah, I, w I was working on something, other project, when this got delivered here, and I just quit working on it so I could do this. Okay, so I'll be back in a little bit.